Hi, I'm Lily. Today I'm going to show you how I made the steampunk puppets that I've used in my last stop motion animation. If you haven't seen the short film, I'm going to put a link above and in the description below. I made two puppets and four different heads that I can change around. One of the puppets has a mechanical heart, so I wanted to be able to alter the main structure and also alter the clothes so you can have an opening and showing the mechanism underneath. I discover a game-changing material which is dragon skin and by the way I'm not sponsored by any single brand or anything so if I mention in this tutorial some brands or some materials or anything like that it's just because I do think they are right for the job and I enjoy working with them. So I'm going to show you how I made this whole puppet from scratch, how I've used the dragon skin to create the skin all around my puppets and I hope you enjoy this video. So I started by making a rough sketch of my puppet and line up the skeleton inside of it. Then I've cut a pieces of wire of the size that goes from one hand to the feet and cut a bit of extra and I copied this four times, two for each side. Then I cut some other wires to go from one hand to the other, always with a bit of extra. And the last one from one feet to another. Then I start twisting the wire together, not too tight, just enough so that it holds together. For the feet, I've used those wing knots, which are really handy because you can use the wings themselves to twist the wire uh, around it. And this is how it looks together. Then I took some milliput, epoxy body, and mix it well together. And I start building up the volume of my puppet. Make sure you don't cover the joints so that the feet and the arms can still bend where they should bend and keep the knots in the feet clear as well so you want to be able to put your screws in later on. Then I've used some super scopy to cover all the joints because that will stay flexible. And this is how it looks before I start coating it in rubber. I've discovered this amazing stuff, which is dragon skin. It's a translucent rubber and this version cure very fast, like 30 minutes or so. You can color it with pigments. This is what I've used and you can see a little sample of what it looked like. So I mix up my dragon skin with the pigment and apply a first coat throughout. Make sure your hands and arms are upwards because gravity will play a big role in how the rubber sets. This is how it looks with the first coat and I've applied a second coat exactly the same way. And this is how it looks with two coats. Then it was looking a bit shiny, so I've used some baby powder and brushed it all around. In order to be able to place the head into the body, I had to drill a hole. Take your time, make sure it's straight and centered. So now to make some eyes, I start making some little ball with some FIMO and then insert a bit of wire into it so that it can hold into a wooden stem. I've cooked it for 20 minutes. And then I've applied a bit of aluminium on every single piece. Then I was able to shape some tiny eyelids on top of the aluminium and create some different sizes when the eyes is fully closed or when it's almost completely open. Then cook it for another 10 minutes. Take them out of the aluminium very carefully and try to not lose them. Then I went back to my little white balls and I apply some paint. I like to use a Q-tips to be able to make a nice round shape. Once that was dry, I drill a tiny hole in the middle of it. And I fill that hole with some black gesso and a toothpick. 
Now for the head, I've used a bowl of aluminium foil and used two pieces of aluminium wire that I crossed around it. Then cover everything with Super Sculpey or on top of polymer clay. Make some holes for the eyes. Place your eyes into it and start building some clay around it. And then start sculpting it. So start working with your nose, start to add volume, add some lips, add some chicks. Add some volume if you think is missing. Um, I thought my head was a little bit too small, so I've added volume on top of it. Add some ears. And this is how my head looked before I start making a mold to duplicate the head. To make the mold, first I slice the back of the head to make it flat and press it on a piece of cardboard. Then I've built up some wool with cardboard and a hot glue gun to hold it in place. Then I mixed up some silicone, roughly 100 gram of this one, and pour into the mold. Let it set overnight and then take the cardboard out the mold out and remove your head. Now to fill the heads it was a bit tricky. I build up some clay around the eye first, the nose and mouth, then I put my eyes in and put a bit of clay on top of it so make sure they stay in place and then just keep adding some clay to fill the mold. Then I've used a bowl of aluminium foil, cover with Super Sculpey and press it in place. Make sure the wire is positioned where it should be and add clay until you feel the whole volume at the back of the head. Take out the mold very carefully and usually the eyes are all over the place so put them back where they should and start just touching up everywhere. Remove the air bubbles, smooth every surfaces that needs to be. And this is how my four heads look like. For the hair, I only had some white wool to work with because we were in lockdown and some supplies are hard to get by. And I soaked the wool into diluted paint, some brown, sienna, red, orange, and the different shade turned out really lovely. I've cut the wool in length of 12 cm and separate each strand. And then I apply each hair into the head with a sculpting tool. I build up two lines all around the heads and later on, I've also added on top of it to avoid the bold heads seen from the back. I've added some eyebrows with brown Fimo. And I've also added some colors on the lips. I'm going to talk a bit about the clothes, but honestly, I'm far from a tailor. I barely know how to manage a sewing machine. So my technique is usually to eyeball everything and give it a shot, see if it works. If not, then I know which component of each clothes I need to alter and make bigger, longer, whatever. So I've used the puppet as reference for proportion and I've done some different templates to, until I have a few of them that looks like they should work. I copy every single one of them on fabric, cut them out, and start to assemble them with the sewing machine. I've attached the front and back panel first, then I start adding the sleeves, pin it, sew it. I've also discovered on this project some fabric glue. This is really cool and it works really nicely for pieces like the collar and the cuff later on. So 
So I kept assembling all the pieces until it looks like that. Then I tried to put it on my puppets and realized my hands were too big, so I had to reopen the sleeves just to be able to pass the hands through. Once it was on the puppet, I can stitch it by hand. Then I've added some cuffs with tiny bits of fabric that I fold and glue together. I've also added some tiny bits for details. For the corset, first I wrapped up my puppets in cling fill and then apply small pieces of duct tape. Then I've used a permanent marker to mark the shape of my corset. And then separate into sections. I've cut the pattern out and then copy it onto fabric. Make sure you mirror every pieces. This is how it looked before I start to assemble it. Then I pin it and pass it through the sewing machine. This is the initial assembly. And this is with much more alteration to fit the puppet. For the trousers, I've done similar technique than the shirt. I've roughly marked up the size, defined the shape that I wanted, defined where I want my pockets, and then this is how my little pants look like. For the boots, I've used a similar technique than the corsets, cover with cling fill, tiny piece of duct tape, and then define the shape of your pattern. Copy your pattern on tracing paper. I end up with three little pieces, as you can see here, to make my boots. For the tiny goggles, I've used some little knots that I found in my workshop, make a pattern out of paper and copy it into fake leather that I super glue together. And inside of the knots, I added a tiny piece of glue with a hot glue gun just to fill the hole. I wanted to install a rig to make sure I can hold my puppets uh, nicely and I want it to be hidden as much as possible. So I marker points through the shirt first, then I took up the shirt and start drilling into the poxy potty underneath. Then I've used some super glue to make sure the ball will stay stable inside of the hole. And that way I was able to screw my piece of metal through the shirt so it's almost invisible and hidden underneath the corset. Now I've made two puppets. One of them has the mechanical heart. In order to make this system working, I've used two pocket watches, identical one. One of them, I leave it as is, working. The other one, I took out one of the gear that I was able to uh, replace with the broken gear and later on the proper one. I've copied the proportion in terms of size and depth of the pocket watch mechanism in wood. When I was making the second puppets, I pressed this little piece of wood into the torso and actually left it there. Then I cover everything with the dragon skin. Once the dragon skin was completely set, I cut out around the wooden template and took it out. It took a little bit of adjustment until my pocket watch mechanism could fit nicely. Now, on top of the mechanism, I had to create a breastplate. So I took my first puppet, cover it with a bit of cling fill, warm up a piece of warbler. It's a thermoplastic. When the piece was warm, I've applied it onto the puppet and let it cool down on it to make sure it takes the shape. Then I remove the cling fill and trim the plates. I cut the plate into two sections so it can open on each side to reveal the mechanical heart underneath. Now I've built up the plate with a bit of cotton for volume and then I cover it with some super glue and some fabric. Because if I use the super glue directly onto the shirt, it will go through and stain it and the fabric glue didn't hold enough. So I had to do it in two parts. First cover it with fabric and super glue and then use the fabric glue on top of it to attach it to the actual shirt that I had to cut and alter a bit.
This is how it looks when the glue is dry. And there you go, an opening shirt to reveal a mechanical heart. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Next time, I'm going to show you some behind the scenes of how I shoot the stop motion animation. Take care.